Facebook, live on YouTube, live on TikTok, live on Clubhouse. Our vice is in your way. I'm just wondering, you guys, we're going to talk about how to heal eczema, psoriasis as well. So we're talking about how to heal health problems, skin conditions like acne, rosacea. We'll go into that a little bit too. Trigeminal neuralgia might cover that a little bit. Some aches and pains, chronic fatigue. And we're going to talk about how celery juice helps heal those very things because I haven't done that in a while where I talk about how celery juice actually reverses your acne, your eczema, your psoriasis, your skin problems, your sunspots, <clears throat> your, your sunspots, right? Your liver spots, how it actually heals. This is really important information. So um, we're going to talk about that as well. Also, just a reminder, this is still on sale for another couple of days before the sale is off. And people are totally psyched because they're saving $82 on the MM900 HDS. That's the one you want, though. I'll show you about that later. Good to see you guys. Come on, Chris. Good to see you. Come on. Everybody's coming on here. Patrice, good to see you. We're live on Clubhouse, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok. I'm excited to be on right now. Our vice is in the way where you get ostracized, you get pick, picked on, you get yelled at if you want to try to break a vice because it makes everybody else feel uncomfortable. So if you try to break a vice of some kind, like you're hanging out with somebody, you're hanging out with family, you're hanging out with friends, and you don't want that cheeseburger, so you're just weird, right? So you're just weird. Did that ever happen to you? The Roots Report, good to see you. Did that ever happen to you in your life, you guys, where you're the weird one and you're you're the one made to feel uncomfortable? Lissy Cohn, good to see you. So you're the one made to feel uncomfortable, right? And and so we're not allowed to break our vices. Did you ever, ever see that? We're not allowed to break our vices. So breaking our vices is kind of like off limits. If you start breaking your vices, whatever those vices are, caffeine, coffee, cheese, right? Cheese, milk, butter, whatever those vices might be. Pizza, something that you guys, you know, you guys like so maybe some pizza. I got a pizza right here. And... Whatever that vice is, you have to you have to stay in line and we get punished if we break that line, if we come out of that line, right? Get punished by people around us, loved ones, friends, people we know, and you're just that weirdo. You're that weirdo. You're worried about your health or you're that, you're that weirdo that has health issues. And that's kind of what happens out there and what, what's going on with people so much is that they're up against that. So it's hard to break your vices. Even if you're breaking coffee, even if you, you want to break your vice, you still go up against this. Michael says, 11 days, no coffee, feeling better than ever. Incredible. Teresa, I bought the MM900 and love it. I think my celery juice tastes better. It tastes better for me. That's what I've noticed when, when you have a cold pressed juicer, especially one like this that squeezes all the juice out of it because it's really, it's taking all that flavor out. It's like removing that flavor the way it should be out of that fiber and pulp and giving you that straight herbal extraction. extraction. So, you know, vices have been difficult for so many people, not because they're hard to break, even though that's one aspect of it, right? You guys on TikTok. It's, it's hard enough to break a, break a vice, right? That's hard enough. I get it. But it's not the whole show. It's not the whole issue. It's not the whole problem. It, it's more than that. It's the people around us. And I'm not saying we should be upset about the people around us. That's not it at all. It's just that we're made to feel like we're in the wrongdoing if we're trying not to have that donut, if we're trying not to have that, you know, because and the thing is, is they got the upper hand. Like our friends, our family, our loved ones, or people in at work or whatever it is, right? Coworkers, they got the upper edge. If they're eating all the bad stuff or all the vice stuff, they got the upper edge because they know like we got that little voice inside of us that's saying, you know what, I'll just do this donut one more time. I haven't had a donut in a while. Let me just do this cookie. Let me do this chocolate chip cookie one more time. Let me do this donut one more time. And I'll start to, I'll fix it after that. I won't do any more after that. Todd says, what about a little mushroom coffee? Um, well, the mushroom thing is fine. 
the mushroom. That's okay. But, you know, what, what I don't like is they take an addictive substance and then they try to make you feel good about that addictive substance by adding something good for you like a reishi mushroom or chaga mushroom or some kind of mushroom to the coffee. So if you like being totally jaked over, tricked, then yeah, have your mushroom coffee. If you like being suckered, if you want to if you want to be a sucker, drink your mushroom coffee if you want to be a sucker. Because the industry put the mushroom coffee together so that you, that you would stay on your coffee, buy more coffee, feel good about your coffee, think your coffee is good for you. And when you can do your Reese mushroom away from coffee, so you can do your Reese mushroom away from it. Yeah, I know you guys, like we just got froze out. So, so what people don't get is, is here we go again. It's like, okay, let's make your vice more nutritious. Is that what that technique is right there? So that's a different technique. So mushroom coffee is like, let's make your vice more nutritious so that you never break your vice. So you never break your vice. Instead of let's spare you a lifetime of adrenal burnout. Let's spare you a lifetime of addiction. Let's get you off of that coffee. Let's get you off of that caffeine. Let's not sucker you. Let's not, total, let's not snake oil salesmen, sucker, dupe you, pull the wool over your eyes, and just mix coffee with mu mushrooms and then MLM it and pyramid it, you know? And that's what they do too. I mean, they're all like, they got thousands and thousands of ads going out there. They got millions of dollars in the ads to push that mushroom coffee on you guys. And... There's so much in there you guys don't even know. It's such a scam. It's a scam to get you guys scammed. If you like being scammed, great, great. You know, and you do the mushroom coffee. <laughs> but you have to know that, yeah, you guys, we're just getting cut out. We're totally getting cut out right now. So um, we're talking about lots of stuff here. We're talking about how to heal eczema psoriasis. We're talking about how to heal rosacea. We're talking about how to heal different health conditions. All this is important. Using celery juice, right? And then we're talking about vices, how we get trapped in these vices because the people, the people around us, God bless them, the people around us have the upper hand because if they're eating those donuts and they're eating that sushi, yeah, sushi is a junk food. If they're eating those burgers, if they're eating the cheese and the milk, and the bread and the pizza and they're having the pizza. They got the upper hand. They do. They got the upper hand. It's important to know. And that upper hand is really difficult on so many. It really is. It is. So I know I disappeared on you guys a little bit. So it's just talking about how the people around us that keep us on our vices have that edge and they have that upper hand. And that's the hard part. One of the hard parts right there. You're going to see family. You're going to see friends. You're not going to want to turn down the donut. You're not going to want to turn down the bagel. You're not going to want to turn down the burger or the pizza. Certainly not the pizza, right? Not going to want to turn down the cookies, even if they're gluten-free cookies. So we're stuck. We're stuck in the vice, you know, and we need family and friends. Many people say, I need my family and friends. Some people say, well, I live life alone. I don't need... I don't need, you know, family around me. Some people, I've heard this from different people all through my life where, but you eventually run into somebody or someone and even if it's somebody you haven't talked to in so long, Michelle L., good to see you, like sabotage. And yeah, so the sabotage occurs and we get tangled up in it. We get caught in that sabotage. That's exactly it. I think that, if you're going to break a vice, you have to be aware of this stuff. You do, okay? No one's a bad person for eating burgers and for eating hot dogs and eating chicken fingers and eating pizza. No one's a bad person for gobbling down vegan cookies by the truckload, gobbling, gobbling down all those vegan cookies and chocolate chip cookies, gluten-free cookies and cakes and donuts. No one's a bad person for eating the milk, cheese, and the butter. It's not about that. It's not about if you're good or you're bad. It's not about that at all. But we're made to feel bad. 
we're made to feel bad by the people around us a lot of times if we want to change the way we're doing things. And one of the reasons why we change the way of doing things, I mean, you guys know this, you start getting sick, you start getting some symptoms in your life. Lou and Elle, good to see you. And you start getting to a place in your life where you're sick, you got symptoms, you're seeing doctors, you're seeing people, and it's like, whoa, I gotta get off the processed foods, I gotta get off the fried greasy foods, I have to get off of this stuff. And we get into a place where it's hard to do that with the people around us. And so it takes a willpower. It takes a willpower because we're gonna feel like we're a bad person. We better eat that donut. We better have that slice of pizza. But they got the upper hand, our friends, our family, our loved ones that, that are not really that supportive of changing our foods. They got the upper hand because man, that upper hand is pretty intense. It's like, well, I'm just eating a grilled cheese sandwich right now. And how come you're not gonna have the grilled cheese sandwich with me? You know, I'm just having the French toast and the waffles with all the butter on it. I'm just having the cheese right now. And you know, I'm just having some sushi. I know a lot of people think sushi is really healthy. That's, that always cracks me up. That's always cracked me up all the time. It's like, oh, I went to get, I went to get sushi. I eat sushi a few times a week. And I notice something, and I see it also out there. Like I have friends tell me that they watch a YouTube or they watch, you know, they watch people out there and watch people's videos. It's like they're out getting sushi and everybody's so proud of themselves with sushi. They're like so proud of themselves with sushi. Sushi is loaded with the bad sugar. It's, it's loaded with vinegar. And on top of that, if it's the tuna, you got the mercury. So you just had your vinegar, mercury, delight. You just had your fermented vinegar, you know, which destroys your bones and teeth. You just had your mercury, which will bring you to Alzheimer's and dementia faster in your life. So I love when everybody thinks they're so happy about the sushi. Like, oh, I had sushi, that covers it. I went out with my friends and I had sushi. No, I ate healthy that night. Are you kidding me? And that's another thing out there you'll see out there. It's like sushi is supposed to be healthy. You guys, MM900 HDS is, so this is the mega juicer at megajuicers.com, O-M-E-G-A, right? This is the juicer right here, the MM900 HDS. Um, on sale, $82 off, which is incredible. Omegajuicers.com, 25% off. But that sale is coming to an end pretty soon. So I wanna let you guys know, so in just in case, um, and you guys know I'm working with Omega. You guys know that, right? Working with Omega, because this is a medical device. In my opinion, it's a medical device. Um, juicers are a med medical devices. So they're extractors for medicine. Did you know that when Big Pharma, did you guys know this? When Big Pharma make all their drugs, when they make all their drugs out there, right? Did you know that they're doing extractions? That's what they do. They're synthesizing, but they're also extracting. They're synthesizing, they're extracting. They're, they have machines in Big Pharma that are like juicers. So, and they have these machines in Big Pharma that are like juicers. They're medical style juicers. They're geared for, they're small too. They're like small machines. They have them in their drug factories. And they're there to extract and, and with the alchemy that they work with. So. What people, what no one gives credits to juicers like this. That's a medical device, a medical tool, but it's downplayed. It's always downplayed out there when it's the, one of the most important critical devices in your life. If you don't have a juicer, I recommend someday getting a juicer. If you don't get the MM900 HDS, even though it's on sale right now, then and you get another juicer, fine. I want you to be able to juice. That's the number one goal. So doesn't matter to me in the end, like what juicer you have. This one just saves me money. I talk about that all the time. People are getting their juicers who have order. Health with Liz, good to see you on TikTok. Good to see you too, good to see you too. So what about ice cream once per week, um, Anthony? Um, strike seven, seven, good question. I got a friend calling in. I got a friend calling in too. And we'll, you know, that's actually gonna talk about that as well. So. You guys, when it comes down to this herbal extractor is what you're looking at right now. 
it's extracting medicine. That's why I call it a medical tool, a medical device, because it extracts medicine. Hey, how you been? Good, good. I'm just about to have. I'm about to have a hot dog. Yeah. I'm not overdoing it. Just once every couple of weeks, I have a hot dog. Yeah. It's moderation. I talk about the moderation thing all the time, right? Because that's what my doctor keeps on telling me. I can have what I want in moderation. So I just leave it to a hot dog once every couple of weeks. If I had one five days ago. Well, I did, okay. That's okay. I'm having one five days ago and I'm having one now. So that's not like... Two every two weeks, but this is a different month, and I just I just feel like I needed that. Yeah, I well I'll just wait a little longer, and then I'll wait it out and try to have my hot dog a week for, and a half from now. Think I can do it? Well, the other I've been having this chocolate fudge ice cream. I'm doing two. I'm doing this chocolate fudge ice cream every two weeks. Yeah. What, what's wrong with that? So if I'm doing the hot dog every two weeks and I'm doing the chocolate fudge ice cream every two weeks, did I have pizza? Yeah, I had pizza. I have a pizza ready for... Um, my friends are coming over later. We're going to have some pizza. But I haven't had a pizza in two weeks. My, my doctor said moderation works. It's, it works. So what I'm doing is I'm practicing moderation. I'm having a pizza every two weeks, a chocolate fudge sundae every week, and I'm having a hot dog every two weeks. So I'm doing the moderation thing really well. Yeah, I had a little cheese the other day, and I had some bread. So that's like a pizza. Um, yeah. I gotta eat my chocolate fudge Sunday. Moderation is, yeah, I could, look, I know I'm lactose intolerant. Is that even real? Lactose intolerance? I know I'm, I, sh I'm, I shouldn't be having dairy. I know, but, I, but I'm having it once a week right now. Okay, all right, I gotta go. But vices are ridiculously hard to break because of people around us. That's one reason why they're really hard to break. It's not because anybody's bad. It's not because there's bad people around us. There's not because of any of those reasons. It's because of the reason of it's they got the upper hand. I mean, you're starving. You're hungry. It's like, hey, look, I'm just bringing home a pizza. Um, no, you stick to your plant-based diet. Um, no, you stick to your... No, you stick to whatever it is, your, your dairy-free diet. And But we're going to have... Everybody in the family is going to have a pizza. So let's put the pizza on the counter. Everybody dig in. Let's grab it. Let's, oh, you can't have it? Yeah, why not? Just have a slice. Don't worry, just have a slice. What do you mean you can't have pizza tonight? Have a slice of pizza tonight. One slice is not gonna hurt. It's not gonna hurt. Um, so we run, into, we run into this all the time. We run into this all the time. Reading comments as they come up. Death by a thousand cuts is what it ends up being. So we're up against the death by a thousand cuts. So we get a jab here, we get a jab there, we get a jab here, we get a jab there. What are you guys doing to go against those cuts? What are we doing? Dairy products feeds the pathogens that are inside of us. So milk, cheese, butter will feed all the bugs inside of us. Eggs will feed the bugs inside of us. So all these little bugs inside of us, they'll get fed by... Milk, cheese, and butter. So you got your stick of butter right here. Viruses love butter. They do. And it takes weeks to get the dairy out. So the question, by the way, that was a really good question about should I have some ice cream once a week? Is that okay? Or I eat ice cream once a week. Is that okay? Strike 7-7. Seven, seven. Thanks, Anthony, very much. Thank you for being on here. So that, that's a really good question, but it takes more than a week to get the dairy out of you. So it'll take 10, 14 days, sometimes longer, depends on how like stagnant and sluggish your liver is. So getting that cheese out of you or that ice cream out of you, that milk out of you, getting that out, any kind of dairy product doesn't just, it doesn't get out in two days. 
Like I'm gonna go to bathroom and it's all gonna be cleaned out. It just doesn't. It sits on the sides of your intestinal tract for days and days and days, over a week. It's there feeding all the different bugs, all the different pathogens. So if you've got eczema, psoriasis, if you've got rosacea, if you have acne, if you have vitiligo, if you have any condition at all, any condition, it doesn't matter what it is, whether you've got chronic fatigue syndrome or Hashimoto's thyroiditis, you really don't get a good chance to heal because you got a dairy product in you and the dairy product in you is sitting there and it's feeding all the different bugs and it's feeding them every single day and it takes days and days to get it out. Lynette says, what about organic raw cheese? That's the only dairy I give my kids. Um, look, I, I look at it this way. I look at it this way. Are the kids perfectly fine? Do they have any symptoms? I get asked this by doctors all the time too. And are the kids dealing with any kind of condition, any kind of symptom? So that's one thing right there. So that's just, we can we put that into consideration because it doesn't matter if your dairy's raw or your dairy's cooked, your dairy's pasteurized. It doesn't matter if your dairy's been heated up in the oven. It doesn't matter if your dairy's just raw dairy. It's still going to feed any bugs or pathogens. So if kids have rashes, skin conditions, eczema, psoriasis, where they got some ADHD or they got some brain fog, because kids have brain fog. We, we don't call it brain fog with kids. We don't call it. We'll call it like attention, you know, drifting off and, you know, behavioral issues or something. And we'll call it that. And so it all depends on what kind of symptoms are your children exhibiting. What about their teeth? That's another one too. So are your children's teeth, are your children's teeth, are they having problems? Are the new teeth growing in? Are the baby teeth problematic? Were the baby teeth rotting were the baby teeth getting cavities were the baby teeth being pulled had to be pulled what's going on with the baby teeth and then the new teeth coming in what's happening with those teeth so that's a big one right there so if you have you have a child that has teeth problems or a baby that has teeth problems where the teeth are coming in and we got all these teeth issues then raw cheese isn't going to be a good one because that's how we lose our calcium too. So we lose our bones that way. So we'll talk about this, right? This is actually a good segue into this here. So when mommy's really, really acidic and she's eating dairy and she's eating cheese, she's losing all of her calcium. That's the calcium the baby uses. So the baby, get, the baby's calcium comes from mom having spare calcium, spare calcium. Like calcium that's derived from fruits, vegetables, anything else that she eats, wild foods, if she ever eats that, any kind of herbs, if she ever takes any kind of herbs throughout her life, right? So that calcium disappears if everybody's acidic, if mom's really acidic. Margaret says, my little one was born with rotting teeth. She had to get four cavities at one years old. Four caps at one years old. Four caps. So... Dr. Fon, good to see you there. Basically what happens is that pregnant women are told to eat all the wrong stuff. And that happens every day. And then the baby's teeth are going to be problematic because of that. So pregnant moms are told to eat dairy. And look, there's a lot of pregnant, pregnant moms out there that got their farms and they got their Instagram page and YouTube page and they live partially off the land and they have their own milk and they have their own butter, they make their own butter, and they're pregnant, and they're giving it to their children, and they're eating it, and they may have had good calcium storage bins in them starting from their childhood, from their mom. They may have good calcium storage bins. Maybe they don't have a lot of toxic heavy metals in their system because that takes away our calcium too. It interferes. But all that cheese and that milk and that dairy, regardless of it being... Not like all natural where it's on a farm, it's raw versus pasteurized. Either way, it's going to require that you lose all that calcium inside your bones. You lose that inside your bloodstream over time. And so when you're pregnant, what happens to a lot of babies is that when mom's pregnant, she's eating all that dairy or ate all that dairy before her pregnancy. And there's a real serious acidic environment going on. And then the calcium's not available for the baby. 
So teeth suffer when calcium's not available. Teeth suffer. So in infants, that's where we, we end up with the teeth problems. We end up going into that direction right there. So let's go, let's keep on talking about some other stuff. So when we're doing our foods, when we when we're doing our foods, like our donuts, our cakes, our cookies, our cheese, our milk, our butter, we're creating this acid environment from all of it. And that's not the only place we have the acid environment. We have it from other places too. Animal pro people who eat animal protein, I always tell them that they need to balance it. Where's your leafy greens? Because if you just do your animal protein, you're doing your animal protein and you only do a little bit of broccoli, you only do some green beans, you only do a little lettuce here and there, you only do some cauliflower rice here and there, but you're doing your animal proteins, you're going to get yourself in trouble eventually because you need to be buffering that with something else. The leafy greens are critical. So the leafy greens are so important right there. And what people don't realize is that not enough people, not, not pe people are not eating enough leafy greens. They're not balancing that acid environment. And then there's all the fats. So then we got all that fat in the diet. So that's a whole nother problem all on its own. So whether you're plant-based and you're vegan, everybody's tanking the fats, right? I always say you guys, they're fatting themselves to death. They're fatting themselves to death. And as they're doing that, that's a whole nother problem all on its own because that's acidic. So you can be like, hey, I'm vegan, I'm plant-based, I don't do the dairy products, I'm in the pocket right here, AW is going to let me off the hook, I'm totally cool, let, to, let the back to the landers be eating their, churning their own butter and drinking their raw milk, let other people be eating their store-bought cheese and their store-bought dairy that's been pasteurized, I'm off the hook, I'm vegan, I'm off the hook, I'm plant-based, I don't have any problem at all, that's not true. If you're tanking the almond butter, the peanut butter, if you're eating too many walnuts, eating too many seeds, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds every single day, if you're having too much oil and that oil gets away from us all the time, if you're eating too many avocados, if you're doing all of this, all of that is acid. That's all acid. Fatty acids. Essential fatty acids. You're doing all your olive oil? Olive oil is acidic as heck really really acidic and it's acidic inside the body really important to know so people don't realize that they're like wait a minute that's not acid that's not acid so we get this acidic environment when we're tanking the fats so what we do is we grow up we're usually eating all the milk cheese butter we're doing all the comfort foods we're doing all the vice foods we were talking about vices earlier we're doing all these comfort foods and then even when we go healthy or we're eating healthier, we're still doing all the fat, which is acidic. So we're basically living in this acidic environment. Our urine stinks when it shouldn't stink. Because that's a whole nother thing is people's pee isn't supposed to smell rancid and awful. Like people's pee is not supposed to smell. Urine is actually not supposed to have such an intense smell at all. But that urine is all acids. So it's everybody just peeing that acid out. Urine is not supposed to be yellow. <laughs> you know, it's not supposed to be yellow. And it's not supposed to smell. Just so you guys know. It's supposed to be a light, faint smell. And it's not supposed to be yellow. All that is acids pouring out of us. Our minerals in our body pouring out of us. That's what that is. And... If you start eating really healthy, you're doing like the morning cleanse, you're taking care of yourself, you're juicing your celery juice, and you still have stinky pee, and it's really yellow, now you're cleansing out old stuff. You're cleansing out old stuff that was built inside of you for years. What helps the acidic body? What helps to heal that? Well, I'm not going to say fruits and vegetables, because that's not going to do it. It's not enough. You need powerful herbal ex extractions, like the celery juice. So whether you, you get a juicer down the road, whether you get some other juicer down the road, whether you have a juicer and you're using it, whatever that one is, that is a powerful medical tool. And that's one way of reclaiming your health back and balancing that. Stopping the acids from injuring and taking from you. Like neutralizing those acids. Neutralizing those acids. 
People who've got eczema, psoriasis, skin problems, health conditions, who are really, really acidic. Asparagus produces a smell. Sandra. Yeah, because it's got a chemical compound that does that. So asparagus has a chemical compound inside of it that is creating that smell. So that's what asparagus is. It's not, it's not causing, it's not, that doesn't mean you're acidic, but asparagus is really cleansing. It's very cleansing. If you're eating enough of it, you're gonna be cleansing your system, cleansing your system. We have so much stuff built inside our livers, built inside of us. We have so much junk and garbage. We have acid stored in places. We have salt deposits that shouldn't be inside our body stored in places. We have deposits of pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, toxic heavy metals, solvents, household cleaners. We have fragrances inside of us, fragrances inside of us. I, I recently talked to a surgeon who has a really good sense of smell, incredible sense of smell, doesn't use fragrances, never uses fragrances, and even opted in, in OR to change the chemicals that they use to a chemical that didn't smell as much in the OR. So, and this surgeon told me that because the, the surgeon doesn't use the fabric softeners, doesn't use all the different fragrances, doesn't use the chemicals, doesn't use chemical cleaners, conventional cleaners, doesn't use cologne or perfume, no air fresheners, doesn't burn scented candles. This surgeon said that the smell of patients when they're saturated in scented candles on their skin from their house, when they're saturated with air fresheners from their house, when they're saturated with all this, the smell of it, when the surgeon cuts the patient open, the smell, it's the first time I've had a surgeon ever tell me that and confirm what Spirit of Compassion's information is. That, that you can actually smell the inside of their body and smell the air fresheners and smell the scented candles from the inside of the body. And so the surgeon said that because he removed everything, everything in his life, where his house doesn't smell like any chemical cleaners, his nose got really, really sharp. Super, super sharp, you guys. So sharp, every time he cuts open a patient, he just doesn't smell all the toxins inside the body, which is what, which has got that real gas, that ammonia comes out of people. When you cut people open on the table, right, for surgery, ammonia just comes right out of them. All that rotting, putrefied flesh that they've eaten that's in their guts, all the acids that are in their blood, all the fat that's in their blood that went rancid because it's floating around their blood every day because they're eating nothing but fats every single day. When you cut open a patient, the stink comes out of them. It's, it's, it's awful, right? Well, the surgeon now can smell, it's not just that stink, but the air fresheners come out of people. So the air freshener coming out, the scented candles coming out. And that's what the surgeon can smell. So it's really incredible when you think about it. So when people are doing all the scented candles, that's inside their bloodstream, that's inside their liver, that's circulating inside of them. We're doing the air fresheners every single day. I tell people, pull those air fresheners out. People should be complaining to every single clothing company that sends anything that reeks. But the problem is people don't even smell the new clothes reeking with air fresheners in the factories and the warehouses with all that smell, the chemicals on the clothes. People don't complain because they can't smell it because they already have it inside their house. Everything stinks inside their house. It's all the chemical cleaners, conventional cleaners, detergents, fabric softeners. So M-Tribe says, but how are people living off the typical American diet? It seems like nothing is wrong. Well, look, there are people on the typical American diet, right? But they end up sick. They just end up sick later. No one gets sick. Everybody gets sick with something. I talk to people that are on the typical Amer uh, American diet, SAD, and they've had surgeries. But yeah, they're fine afterwards. They've, you know, they've had their gallbladder taken out. Now they're back in action. They've had appendix removed. Now they're back, back in action. They've had some other type of surgery. Now they're back in action. Or they get sick later with chronic illness. They end up feeding their pathogens. They end up picking up a new pathogen. They end up picking up a new Epstein-Barr or, or a shingles um, or, or strep or something. They pick something up 
and it finally tips the scale or whatever's been incubating inside of them. They're Epstein Barr for 20, 30 years. If they don't have an aggressive one, finally it takes over or the stress plus the, the fight or flight, the caffeine finally takes over. All the vinegar they've done all these years starts to break apart their teeth. Now they're in the dentist chair all the time getting dental work. It hits all at once so many times like that. With the... But the thing about people like, hey, those people can eat what they want. They eventually get sick and go down. They eventually do. And we're in a place where that's happening more than ever. Stephanie says, does celery juice support autoimmune diseases? It supports it in the right traction. It doesn't support the auto, autoimmune disease to stay there. So, so what, what you'll see out there is all these things out there support autoimmune. So they do. Apple cider vinegar supports autoimmune in keeping it there forever. Vinegar supports it. Caffeine supports, caffeine supports your autoimmune disease in the opposite direction, making it worse or keeping it there forever. It doesn't support it getting you out of autoimmune disease. Caffeine doesn't pull you out of auto, autoimmune disease. The vices don't pull you out of autoimmune. We keep our autoimmune. You have sushi, you keep your autoimmune. You have some donuts, you have gluten-free donuts, you keep your autoimmune. You have vegan donuts, you keep your autoimmune. You keep it there. You have your burgers. You have, you can be in a vegan restaurant and still have one of those bean burgers or something like that, but the amount of crap that's in there and the amount of fat that's in there and the MSG that's hidden in there and the canola oil and anything else, you're still keeping your autoimmune. And so we end up keeping that autoimmune around forever. Celery juice helps take us out of that. It helps to take you out of autoimmune. Eczema psoriasis, that's an autoimmune condition or listed as an autoimmune condition. And celery juice pushes people out of that, helps to get rid of their eczema. If you want to get rid of eczema, like really get rid of it, if you want to get rid of psoriasis, rosacea, if you want to get rid of vitiligo, if you want to get rid of acne, you, you have to be doing celery juice. You have to learn how to do the herbal extraction. And if you don't learn to do it now, fine. You learn to do it down the road, do it down the road, do it five years from now. Five years from now. Heavy metal detox smoothie, that's a critical one right there too. I talk about that, you guys. I talk about the barley grass juice powder and the spirulina, that's the Vimergy. I'm not sponsored by these guys. This is just the best company with all the stuff that they have. Spirulina, barley grass. So you guys know Vimergy, V is in Victor, I-M-E-R-G-Y.com. But inc incredible products, the products I use for my friends and family too. Kelsey Bach, good to see you here. Kelsey Bach healed uh, like dozens of symptoms, dozens of symptoms. I don't know what it, Kelsey, is it like 43 symptoms? Is it 50 symptoms? What was it? Like, I think it was 43 symptoms, right? TikTok, good to see you. And I don't mean the app. I don't mean TikTok app. I mean the handle TikTok. Kelsey, uh, I think Kelsey healed like 43 symptoms. She does celery juice. She does a lot of medical medium tools. So good to see you here. Educating myself, good to see you too. I'm gonna juice some celery now, you guys. So it's important to know these things about getting out of that acid environment. We can talk a good game, we can talk about acids and alkaline, but if we don't know really anything about it, how can we do that? So if, you, if you're hearing information from so-called health experts that know about alkalinity and acidity, body being acidic, and they're telling you to have all your avocados, they're telling you to have you know, all your, your healthy fats, they're telling you you can have your peanut butter, they're telling you all these things, your olive oil, and they're pushing it. They're telling you can have your lean proteins. That it's not that you can't have any of that. But if you're sick and you're struggling with a symptom, or you got eczema, you got psoriasis, you have something that you want to get rid of. You have to bring down the fats because the fats are acidic. It's all acid. That's what the fats are. It's fatty acids. That's what the fats are. It's all acidic. So. We have to learn how to bring down those fats. But first things first, what kind of vices do you have that's not fats? Like, do you have fats plus other stuff? Like, are you doing the cheeseburgers? Are you doing the pizzas a lot? Are you doing all the eggs, fried eggs? Are you doing the toast all the time? Are you doing the bagels, doing the hot dogs, are you doing the butter? Is butter going on in your diet? So these vices, you have to learn to take them out. And, you're not a bad person if you keep them in. You got my support 
I'm here giving you guys support. And I've been doing it for 35 years. <laughs> I remember doing lectures in health food stores 35 years ago and, and being there for people and supporting their, to get them off their vices. An old friend reached out that used to be somebody who used to come to me for help 30 years ago, reached out and said, they're still doing, still doing all the good stuff. And they're in their 80s now. They're in their 80s. Pina says, celery healed eye rash. The red burning, itchy peeling, and it's gone. Started the third day of juicing celery. Is that incredible? That's absolutely incredible. Really, really is. And I'm so proud of you, by the way. So proud of you. Just moving some stuff over, you guys. Let's juice a little celery now. We're coming to the end of the sale with the MM900, just letting you guys know. Best protocol for chronic yeast infections. This is one part of it right here. What is a chronic yeast infection? What is it? Is it yeast? Right? No, it's not. It's not just yeast. Yeast is just present with a chronic yeast infection. It's just present. A yeast infection is streptococcus. It's strep bacteria behind everything. And that's why the yeast infection stays chronic because there's a bacterial infection behind there. And the reason why people get rid of their yeast bacterial infections with celery juice is because celery juice kills the streptococcus bacteria behind the yeast. That's why. So it kills the strep bacteria behind the yeast. Important to know. Celery juice is no joke. It's an herbal medicine. So you're witnessing an herbal medicine. Eating celery sticks is not enough. It's not enough, you guys. And if you're somebody who's on your vices still, you're doing your caffeine, you're doing your chocolate, you're doing your coffee, you can't stop your chocolate. You're still doing it. You have your chocolate bars, pieces of chocolate every day. You better be countering those death by a thousand cuts. You know, when you count the squares right here, it's one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. So you got three across, I mean four across, 24 squares. That's 24 cuts. 24 cuts. What are you doing to counter it? What herbal medicine are you guys doing? Someone's probably gonna say, oh no, I take my herbs by a great, a great healer. Look into those herb, herbs, look into them. What fillers are there? Is there alcohol in your tinctures? That's what I love about the Vimergy stuff. There's no alcohol, but it's even better than that. There's no junk, no fillers hidden in there. No MSG hidden in there. And so that's the Vimergy licorice root right there. That's the Vimergy cat's claw. So what tools are you guys using to counter, counter the, the cuts, to counter the acid? Look, I don't, I don't expect anybody to do it all unless they get there and they just, they're so tired of being sick and they need to go further because they're really sick. I just, basically, I'm just in that place of what are you doing? What can we do? You know how many people say they're on the MM diet? You know how many people say they're on the medical medium diet or medical medium protocol, but they're doing chocolate, caffeine, they're doing matcha tea, they're doing lots of fat, which is acid, straight acid. Even if they're vegan. I noticed people throughout the years, they've gone vegan, not because of medical medium necessarily, because they're following some vegan doctors, but then they turn around and they don't say, hey, I'm doing the vegan doctor, the, the vegan doctor author's diet. They say, I'm doing the medical medium diet and it's not working. They're not even doing the medical medium diet. They're not doing medical medium anything. I see that all the time. All the time. How many natural flavors are people consuming? What kind of natural flavors? That's all MSG. What about the nutritional yeast? What about that? Nutritional yeast. And then the vinegars. How many vinegars are you using? 
If you have sushi, if you have vegan sushi, it's vinegar. I can't tell you how many people go with their friends to get sushi and they get the fish-free sushi, meaning no tuna, and it's loaded with vinegar. And they think, they think that they're all good and it's loaded with vinegar. Then they'll just say they're still doing the MM. They're doing the MM protocol and they're not getting better. So people will do that all the time and they're not even on the right supplements. It's like, yeah, I took a zinc. Well, not really. If you're taking a zinc with all the citric acid in it and all the other crap in there and all the fillers, if you're not doing like the Vimergy zinc or one comparable, which I haven't found one comparable, but you can use whatever your doctor tells you, you know, do what your doctor says. Never seen any, good to see you. But all these things matter. So how many MM tools and where are we going with the tools? Like, are we really using the MM tools? The juicer is a critical medical medium tool. And if you have your own juicer, it's different than this, use it. That's a medical medium tool. If you're using some other juicer out there, it's a medical medium tool. Because if you need to use it as an herbal extractor and you need to extract that herbal medicine. I just juiced all the celery juice, right? And that's, that's all the pulp, you guys, right there. That's it. On TikTok, check this, guys out. check this out, you guys. It's in between two fingers, look. And it's dry. It's dry. That's the pulp. If I squeeze it into a little ball, this is incredible right here. This is the most I've ever seen it get to this point. That's it right there. It's a little ball in my fingers. You guys see that? This is dry. And that's a ball between my fingers. I'm actually kind of blown away. Like, I don't know how this even happened <laughs> to this degree. This is the best I've ever seen my juicer ever do. And it always does great. Uh, I'm holding between my two fingers, this tiny little ball of dried pulp. And that is what I'm talking about right there, about the MM900 HDS. It's $82 off. It's almost $100 off. And I hear people out there saying, oh my God, thank God I got it because I saved about basically $100. And, um, and I got the MM900. But it's the omegajuicers.com. You got to go there, you guys. Omegajuicers.com. O-M-E-G-A juicers.com. Got to get the MM900 HDS because it's not any. Their, their other juicers aren't going to do this. They got juicers that look like this. It's got to be the MM900 HDS. It's not going to do what I'm doing this. I can't even put this down because I don't even understand how this happened. Like that's the next level is what this is. So I'm holding a tiny ball of dried pulp in between my fingers. And that's how much juice I have right here. I'm actually saving that right there. I'm be calling up my friends afterwards. I mean, it's always small and it's always dry, but that was a whole nother level. So I'm doing a little straining right here, straining the juice. You have to strain your celery juice. It's not going to work as good. You have to strain it. It's critical that you strain it. It's giving everybody the 411 on that. It's critical that you strain the juice. So... What medical tools are you guys using? Which medical devices are you using? And people say, well, medical tools, uh, I got some crutches in the closet. I got, you know, something else. And I'm like, okay, a, a friend of mine's grandmother has a walker. And I'm like, I'm not talking about that medical, that kind of medical tool. You need the walker, yes. But what about something that's going to help so grandma can start walking again without the walker? Like, we need to go into that direction. Like, where's the medical tool? In eczema psoriasis, I'll go into that a little bit. Celery juice is incredible because of what it does when someone has eczema psoriasis. So I just want to grab something real quick. So when it comes down to, when it comes down to someone getting eczema, someone getting psoriasis. So here's your liver right here. That's your liver. A right liver. If I should have wrote it back, or actually, you could see it. So that's your liver. If you got eczema, you got psoriasis, you got some kind of skin condition, you even have acne. There's bugs inside the liver. 
when it comes down to eczema and psoriasis, you got Epstein-Barr inside the liver. Rosacea too, Epstein-Barr inside the liver. When you have acne, you got streptococcus inside the liver. So your liver is a little bug holder. It's the bug holder. That's what your liver is. It holds the bugs. And those bugs start to feed off of stuff. They feed off of toxic heavy metals. So they feed off of those toxic heavy metals. You're in medical medium school right now, right? So you got the toxic heavy metals inside the liver. And all those bugs feed off of that. Someone has eczema psoriasis, the Epstein-Barr feeds off of copper. So that's what the Epstein-Barr feeds off of. So if you have Epstein-Barr inside the liver, it's going to feed off of copper and then release a dermatoxin. When that dermatoxin's released, so we'll do a little dermatoxin coming out of here. That's a dermatoxin swimming out of the liver. It's heading up the highway. It's getting into the bloodstream. It's a derma, dermatoxin, right? That's your dermatoxin. That dermatoxin eventually finds its way to the skin and you end up with eczema or psoriasis. Celery juice, the reason why it's reversing tens of thousands of people's eczema for the good, like for good, re re reversing eczema psoriasis for good forever, is because the celery juice is killing off the Epstein bar inside the liver. Sodium cluster salts kill. So the sodium, remember I told you about the sodium cluster salts? You got the macro sodium right? The macro sodium inside the celery. Then you got the subgroup sodium, which is a little solar system. That's your sodium cluster salts. That's going around the sodium. That's your medicine. So when you do your herbal extraction, you guys, with your juicer, even if it's not as good as this juicer, it's not, it's a crappy juicer, bad juicer. You're still doing herbal extraction to some degree for sure. When you do your herbal extraction, you're taking that sodium cluster salt, you're drinking it. That's your herbal medicine. So you're actually drinking, consuming your herbal medicine. And then that sodium cluster salt, when that touches, when it goes inside the liver, so here it goes, it goes inside the liver. I don't know if this is actually working out, but I think it is. So the sodium cluster salt right there goes inside the liver. Right there, it goes inside the liver. It kills off the Epstein bar so that no more dermatoxins come out of the liver. No more dermatoxins come out. So then your skin starts to heal. Your skin starts to heal. Your skin starts to heal. Some people have eczema psoriasis so bad and they have a stubborn Epstein bar that they need to be doing some other things, like I talk about in the medical medium books. And the new edition, medical medium new edition, revised and expanded, it's on sale, amazon.com. You might want to catch a copy of that. It's a critical book to have. And the other one too, Cleanse the Heal, is a critical book to have as well. So if you guys don't have it, you might want to get those. You get it free at the library if you don't want to go to Amazon for the discount on Amazon. They control the pricing. When you start cleaning up that liver and killing off those viruses, and you learn how to do it. Some people, celery juice isn't going to be enough, but you have to have a celery juice. It's a critical part of it. Like The celery juice is a, like, a critical piece of getting rid of that eczema and psoriasis. But if you have a real stubborn Epstein bar and you're not doing other things, then now you gotta bring in other tools in the protocols and the medical medium healing tools. You gotta bring in the zinc, the right kind, the liquid sulfate zinc. You gotta bring the right kind of supplements in too. But I've seen people, they clean up their diet enough, they get rid of their vices, they're getting off the caffeine, they're getting off of the milk, cheese, butter, they're using their celery juice, they're annihilating their Epstein bar. Or if somebody's got acne, they're annihilating they're strep inside the liver and they're cleaning things up so they get rid of all that acne on their skin. So you can do it, the tools are there, but celery juice is a big part of it. So is this, so when someone has a juicer, is it a medical tool, it's a medical device? It is, and it's an herbal extractor and it's helping you get rid of conditions. That's what it's doing. Celery juice is helping reverse conditions. Elizabeth says, Elizabeth Ann Smith, is there a reason you choose that juicer over the other Omega? Yeah, wide mouth, absolutely. That's not the celery juicer. So the other one is not the celery juicer. Um, and so the, the whole point about this juicer, it's the celery juicer and it juices other 
stuff too. It juices, I love it for anything. I'll juice anything. In fact, I'll juice, do a juice someday with other stuff. The reason why I choose this juicer, one reason is because what you just witnessed, you won't get from any other Omega juicer. You won't get a little ball of dried pulp, dried fiber. That, that's it right there. You won't get that. that. That's not in the other juicers. So if you go to omegajuicers.com and you see there's another juicer for sale, you're not going to be able to extract that celery juice like this. There's no way. So this is their celery juicer model. It's the MM900 HDS. What this means is you just cut your celery in half, your celery cost in half, at least by a third, at least by a third. I've seen it where it's a half, so it's half the cost. The juicer paid for itself, paid for itself, paid for itself over and over again. I mean, wouldn't you tell, wouldn't you tell your friends that if, if something paid for itself over and over again? I mean, this is it right here. Here's the pulp. That's it. Just lost it. That's it. All it is is that much. Why do I like to throw things in the air? Lorraine, you're going to have to, Lorraine L., you're going to have to figure that one out for me. How come I throw stuff in the air all the time? I wonder what that is. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Lorraine, one thing I noticed about your comments is they're really thoughtful. And they really, they, you really understand medical medium information of like, is, is, are the people off caffeine? Are they off... Are they off their, exactly, their vices or what other, what other stuff? Or they have junk and other stuff? Because every now and then you'll see somebody say, oh, medical medium information, that's not new. That's not original. There's been, that information was out there. Really? Because, you know, Lorraine, when I read your comments, you, you've been around the health movement for a long time. You haven't seen all the different protocols like this, the way they're put together systematically by spirit of compassion that doesn't exist out there. It's here and celery juice is one of those tools. Yeah, TikTok says juggling. The handle TikTok, not the app. Uh, Lorraine says, this is motivational. It's hard to break vices when we're around family and friends. We're the bad people. We're the people that, you know, we're just causing an upheave. We're making everybody feel uncomfortable is what we're doing. I think what a big part of the whole vice breaking thing around loved ones and others and friends and coworkers is that, yeah, it's making it, it's making them feel uncomfortable because they're not eating healthy or healthy enough. And they're stuck on vices. They're stuck on the, you know, the bad sugar, the bad fat all the time. They're stuck on the milk, cheese, the butter, which is the bad fat and the bad sugar because that's all lactose, the bad sugar. They're stuck on the different things. There's, you know, and they don't want to be feeling uncomfortable because you're changing your life. You're working on healing. You're working hard to heal. They don't want to feel that. They don't want to feel that. Shannon says, oh my God, yes. My family thinks I'm crazy for eating healthy. So you're, you need to be eating some pizza, Shannon. I think that's what it is, right? You need to eat a donut in front of them. Is that what you have to do? Is you, have to, you have to throw yourself on the line for them. Is that what you have to do? You have to eat a pizza in front of them, right? You gotta, you gotta prove yourself. Do you have to prove yourself? Do you have to prove yourself? Because that's what we feel like we're told to feel that way. We're pushed into feeling that way that now we have to, we have to do it for them. Like, let's take a hit for them. Even though it's not going to make you healthy, which isn't going to be good for friends and family if you're not healthy, but I better take this hit for them. <laughs> and it's it's unfair, really, when you think about it. So, so you'll end up being in, put into a place where you're being pushed into having to eat the foods that aren't good for you, that you know in your heart and soul aren't good for you. But they always have the upper hand. TikTok says, no more. They always have the upper hand. And the upper hand is, it's hard to break these foods. It's hard, to, we've been raised on them. We have, these are comfort foods. We've had these comfort foods in our system for a, in a long, many, many years. We've lived with them. We, we know what these comfort foods feel like inside of us. They store away inside our organs, deep in our organs. They store away. And people don't realize that aspect of it too. When you eat all the comfort foods, the comfort foods are stored deep in organ tissue. They become part of the tissue. Something to know. It's really important. 
So when you're eating all the milk, cheese, butter, when you're eating, when you have all the MSG, when you're doing all the MSG deposits in the brain, it deposits inside the liver, these things become part of our cells. And then we walk around with all this baggage of the past inside of us. We walk around with all this baggage. All the baggage of the past is inside of us. Something to consider right there. So anyway, talk about the MM900 HDS breaking the eczema, breaking it, breaking the psoriasis, breaking conditions, breaking health issues, sunspots. If someone's worried about sunspots, I've seen celery juice reverse wrinkles in people, give them, make them look 10 years younger, 15 years younger, it's reversing you know, skin issues of all kinds. And that's just some, that's just one part, not even talking about the lupus and the Lyme disease, the neurological Lyme and, and all the other different conditions, autoimmune in general. You guys, a lot of people don't even get a diagnosis anymore. They get just an autoimmune label. Go to your doctor, they're running the ANA. They can't really put a label on your illness, but they'll put, they'll give you the autoimmune label, but they won't give you an individual an individual diagnosis anymore. I've seen that out there now. I've seen a lot of doctors are sending people out the door and they're not saying they have lupus. They're not saying they got neurological Lyme. They're sending them out the door with just autoimmune when it's, when it's mild in a lot of people. Neurasthenia says I'm 20 years younger. So Lorraine says, I love MM info, Anthony, and the juggling. Doing a lot of juggling today, <laughs> trying to get my words right. Good thing Spirit of Compassion is here to help. So let's give you guys the quick takeaways real quick, okay? You're gonna feel pressure from the people around you when it comes down to the vices. Breaking vices is hard because that's one of the big reasons why it's hard. If you don't have any of that pressure around you, it's hard enough. So it's hard enough even if you don't have all the family and the friends and the coworkers and anybody else that's around you pushing you into eating that acidic, acidic, acidic diet. The other takeaway is acid. The fats are the acid too. Fatty acids. All that fat in the bloodstream makes you terribly acidic. If you're plant-based, you're eating your avocados every day and you wanna become alkaline, you're losing your chance. So you gotta slow down. You gotta have a little avocado here. You gotta have just you know little nut butter here. You gotta have a little bit of olive oil here, but you gotta be careful. Another thing is the big acid ones. Apple cider vinegar, the coffee, the caffeine. Don't get tricked by the mushroom coffee. Basically, it's, they're drug dealers right now out there. It's, it's, it's unbelievable what's happening. And they're turning good people into drug dealers because there's the MLM marketing scheme with the mushroom coffee. And if you stick coffee with anything, just people are gonna be like, whoa, I feel good. I feel good because they're, out, they're high on caffeine. It's the greatest trick. It's the greatest trick. So be careful on that right there. It's another one that's going on around there. Remember you know, that this is an herbal extractor. Keep that in mind. The sale's running for a couple of days more, and then the sale's gonna be gone. I don't know the next time this, this model's gonna be on sale like that. And keep in mind too that it's all about what, what are you doing to take care of yourself. Start with the MM tools one at a time if you need to. Heavy metal detox smoothie, maybe a little bit of celery juice if you need to start that way. Baby steps, get out the dairy, get out the eggs, get some things out of there. If you got a baby step, if you need to go deeper, you go deeper into the protocols and you learn how to do your 32 ounces of celery juice and you learn how to do the right supplementation and dosages like in the books, critical medical books right here. And if you hear somebody that says, I did MM and it didn't work, keep in mind the fly on the wall. <laughs> keep in mind on the fly on the wall because what are they doing? What supplements had alcohol? What had natural flavors? What had MSG? What Did they even do the right dosages? What foods are they still bringing in? Where's the nutritional yeast, which is the bad stuff? How much vinegar are they doing? How much chocolate? Can they break the chocolate? They're doing chocolate every couple of weeks and you need to heal and you're seriously sick. It's not gonna happen. And how many fats were you on? The medical medium teaches you to keep the fats low and everything. So, Lunel, correct. I don't recommend coffee enemas. It's one of the worst things you can do. Damages the central nervous system. Actually damages it because the stomach buffers the caffeine and you can't buffer it when it goes up the back end. So it goes straight to the nerves and it injures the nerves because the 
So keep that in mind. It also injures the adrenals. When you do coffee enemas, you're injuring the adrenals. And adrenals are precious. You guys, I'm heading off to Instagram. I'm gonna put TikTok back on. I'm gonna stick Clubhouse back on. So you guys, TikTok, stand by. I'm bringing you guys back on. So I'm looking forward to it. And I'm gonna put Clubhouse back on. So you guys stand by. And you guys, Facebook, YouTube, head over to IG. We're gonna have some fun.